So what are hybrid meetings? So there are uh, meetings where some people meet in person, like a traditional Rotary Club. I'm trying to move myself down. <laughs> some people meet in person like a traditional Rotary Club meeting, or some people participate from their, Zoom, uh, from their home office or through Zoom. And then the participants and the guests, a uh, speaker can either be in the room in person or on their computer through Zoom, but each person needs to be able to interact with the other people. And I highlighted the guest speaker. The guest speaker could be in a meeting in person, like we're used to with traditional ordering meetings, but they can also be anywhere in the world and participate uh, through Zoom. So that's uh, a good thing to do. So what is um, the technical impact? So unless you have a very few people meeting in person, so if you have a single computer like you have at your desk, you'll be stuck. You would have to move the computer around to point uh, the webcam and the microphone to whoever is speaking. So it would be very cumbersome and uh, not very well. So in this presentation, I'm going to demonstrate how you can hold a small meeting, uh, small to medium to big size hybrid meeting. And uh, some of them might ask, okay, what is small, what is medium, what is big? Uh, it all depends on uh, your meeting location and what you think you will need. And then the uh, people, that, if you have people that actually can um, uh, do bigger, bigger things. So, uh, so it's, it's really, really modular. And now I wanted to uh, give you a clue about what, where I'm located. So here I'm actually at home where we have um, multiple meeting. I'm gonna to switch to this camera. Okay. <clears throat> so we had um, a couple of forward meetings in this, uh, in this location for the Del Mar Rotary Club. So it's actually our home and uh, we have uh, the living room and the dining room and people like you are sitting at the dining room table. Uh, <clears throat> I have, uh, this is actually officially a, a, a hybrid meeting because my wife is sitting here. So there are two of us in person. So hello, Dugan. Hello, hello everybody. So you, yeah, you want to speak or just keeping me in check? I'm keeping Philippe in check and I am an observer for today. Very good. So we have the people in the room doing the meeting, then there is a screen that we share the, the screen to, so everybody can see who is on Zoom. And then I have the big table with uh, uh, all the equipment and a couple of computers. So uh, don't be alarmed. This is really over the top because uh, I am uh, running the session and I want to demonstrate all the equipment. You might be able to have a little less equipment, if you, especially if you are a small club, so don't be alarmed. So uh, I'm going to put this camera back over there, down a little bit and come back to my seat. Go back to the presentation. And I want to give a warning first. So there are many technical ways to hold hybrid meetings and some of your clubs attendees uh, today might already have uh, had hybrid meetings. So you have your own way of doing it. So there is no good and bad way to do it. Uh, multiple technical ways. So you might have other ideas. What I'm going to show you today is um, just uh, some recommendations and you can um, adjust to whatever you have because um, there are very multiple parameters that will affect what you need to do. One, for instance, is your club size. So if you have a smaller size, you could get away with uh, less equipment and just uh, make, keeping it simple. But if you have a very big club, then you need to be able to bring in uh, bigger, more equipment, more cameras, or more microphones and things like that to be able to handle uh, the meeting. You might also already have some equipment in, on location. 
So if you already have a screen and a projector at the place where you are you are meeting, then uh, it's fine. You don't bring that. You may already have some club members that already have some equipment, so you try to use that if they are okay for you to do that. Or if you want it dedicated to the club, you might have to uh, um, to uh, uh, purchase equipment for the club. That's that will be your decision. So it's just a, a trade-off between um, cost and uh, efficiency, I guess. You may own already some equipment or not. And then also uh, you may have some people with different knowledge in each club. Some clubs might be lucky and have uh, someone like Mike Metz or Larry Potter or myself. We can operate all the equipment in our sleep, but uh, some others you will have to assign someone to learn and uh, figure out how to do it. Uh, so, uh, so depending on the technical level you can get in your club, you might be able to um, do it a little more complex or a little easier. So in this presentation, I'm going to focus on the easy first, and then little by little, I'll add uh, segments to it. So to make it more complicated and a better solution, but a little more technic technically uh, difficult. So just uh, see how you can handle it in your club and, and you make your own decisions on what you want to do. So, uh, I'll go through the equipment uh, in detail through the presentation and I'll give a uh, price estimates. Uh, they are from mostly from Amazon, um, but prices may vary. You might find an equivalent piece of equipment that's cheaper or, or whatever you, you have. So it's just to give an idea of, uh, of um, what you get, how much is gonna cost your club to do it. Now, I put this slide back up because uh, I'll go through um, multiple cameras set up and everything. So make sure you are viewing this presentation in speaker view. Uh, you will be able to see and you don't see as me as a small window in the corner. So make sure you do that. So the first thing that's very important uh, is for the meeting place where you're gonna be is the internet connection. So you need to have a good internet connection to be able to do it. Ideally, you would have a wired connection, but if you don't, uh, most, you might be on Wi-Fi, and if you have a choice of network, uh, 2G or 5G, that, these are the Wi-Fi wi different bandwidth, uh, use 5G if is possible. Now, uh, if you are not sure before you select the place where you want to meet, if the internet connection is good or not, you can use speedtest.net. That's a website that will give you the bandwidth that you have in the current location. You will check the download speed and the upload speed. The download speed is what gets uh, served to you, like if, when you are watching a, a video online, and the upload speed is what you are able to send to the network. And uh, for Zoom, the upload speed is very important because the video you are showing on location, you need to push it to other people. So uh, this is, um, and then ask other people to stay off the network. Uh, so if you have too many connections at the same time, it's, on a, it's going to clog your network. So this is typically uh, uh, the bandwidth that um, I have at my home. And uh, this is very good. It's uh, one of the top for consumer uh, networks. Uh, so with that kind of bandwidth, you won't have any, you shouldn't have any problems. Uh, but uh, if you have lower, then you should start worrying about how good and run some tests and everything. Now I'm gonna give some um, tips about um, Zoom first. Okay, so what's very important, you need to be able to select your audio and video. And uh, on, the, on the bottom of your Zoom screen, you get a, I don't see the cursor here, but that's okay. Um, you have a mute button, a stop video or so. And on the right of these icons, you get um, an, up arrow, so if you click that, you can you can see the list of uh, source 
that you can get for your microphone, for your speaker, or for your web camera. And uh, if you have a default laptop and everything, you may only see two options, like same as system, and then your integrated camera or microphone or something. But as we connect more devices to the computer, then you will see things pop up through USB connections, webcams, and things like that. And you need to be able to decide which one you want to select to uh, find out uh, which one you want to use. Now, if you go out to audio settings and video settings, which is the bottom option of the, of the list, you'll have the window on the right, the white window that is going to pop up. And this can both go to video or audio setup. And um, over there, you have the same thing. You can test the speakers. And on the right of test speakers, you can select from the pull down which speaker you want to use. So test it. Make sure you are going to the right speaker. And then test the microphone. Well, um, if you test the microphone, it's going to record your voice and play it back to you after a minute, I mean, less than a minute, but after a little time. So make sure you know how to, uh, to go from one source to another. That's very, very important. Uh, the other thing you might want to uh, be able to do is to uh, add the spotlight on people, especially if you have multiple cameras. And we'll see uh, in a minute that uh, you only need to have one computer that has the audio going through. So but you might want to show the camera from another source in the room. So you need to be able to put the spotlight. So this, you do that either in the participants list, you click on the more on the right of someone's name, and then you can uh, spotlight for everyone. So that makes this one like the speaker video. And once you add it a spotlight, you could add another one. So then you get two speakers or three or four, whatever. And then you can replace the spotlight or um, add the spot, a spotlight as well. Uh, you can do that on the right side of the screen. You see, um, this is, uh, you can also do it from the top, top of the uh, speaker view. You get the webcams of participants. If you click on the three dots on the right, then uh, you get a uh, menu as well, where you can also add the spotlight and everything. So you need to be able to uh, do that in some cases. Uh, I have a couple of other uh, tips. So gallery and speaker view, you need to make sure uh, people know how to do that. And uh, then audio setup for multiple computers is very, very important. You should only have, if you have multiple computers in a room, the microphone and the speaker for one computer in the room. And they should be the same computer because otherwise you are going to have feedback or echo because uh, if you have two computers, I have the microphone on one and then it's, it's playing on the speaker on the second one, it's gonna be a delay. And the speaker from the second computer is gonna go back to the uh, first computer and uh, you are going to uh, hear uh, an echo. So you need to be sure to have uh, only one microphone uh, and speaker on to all the devices you have in the room. Okay, now this is uh, the basic setup. So for a small meeting, you have a computer and uh, instead of having the integrated web webcam, the screen, integrated microphone and integrated speaker, what we're going to do is expand it and uh, have the microphone, the speakers outside of the computer. So, uh, <clears throat> so, so that it will be easier to uh, interact with multiple people. So I'm going through the things. So the laptop first, you need a good laptop and um, you may already have a laptop, so if you can use it, that's fine. Uh, if you already have to buy a laptop, you can get a cheap one for $399. What's important is how many USB connections you have and be able to output the screen to the projector. So, um, so 
and again, this will depend on the size of your club. If you have a small club, you will need lesser, less equipment. If you have a bigger club, you need more. So you need a more powerful laptop with more um, connections. Now the external webcam is um, a, a good thing to have it. So it looks like the one on the left there. And I'm gonna to switch to uh, another view, which one I'm gonna use. Okay, so this is like, I have one here. Uh, that's a webcam that's outside my computer that's actually doing here. And which one is it? It's, uh, you know, move it. It's the uh, webcam here. So it's, uh, it's on a tripod and it's pointing out. So, and the good thing is, let me go back to, the good thing is, let me switch to another view. It's uh, on a USB over there and I have an extension cord so I can move it around. So to point to whoever is speaking or things like that. So that gives me a, a different perspective each time. So that's freedom. Instead of having to move the laptop, you just move the, the webcam, okay? So you can see here, you have the webcam on the left. The middle one is a tripod, you'll be able to put it uh, in there. And then the USB cord. Now, uh, here I have a price for a webcam that's 89. That's quite expensive. You can get some cheaper. Uh, I like this one, it's a higher resolution. And also uh, what's important for me is uh, the way it's hooked up and at the bottom, here you see another webcam that I'm not using because it doesn't have uh, the hole to screw into the tripod. So you can use rubber band, I guess, to put it on the tripod, but uh, if it has a hole, it's better to, uh, you can put it on a tripod and it will be easier to, to manage. So that's the webcam, external webcam. Now you can have an external microphone as well. If you're a small meeting, you can just uh, use one like that, which is USB and, and has a wire. So you limit it to the, how far you can go, but it works fine. Uh, you would have typically a, a one eighth jack mi uh, microphone slot you can use also if you don't want to use USB. And you might be able to find a wireless microphone as well. Like the one that uh, you're going to use earlier and she's bringing it back. So but you need to be able to hook it to your computer. And the microphones here, I'm using a lavalier, but I also have a wireless here and I have another wired microphone. So there are different solutions you'll need to, uh, uh, to uh, figure out how you want to do it. And then the screen. So you may already have a screen in the room. So it's fine if you don't, it's, you can buy a portable screen for about 85 bucks or this is one of these like that. And I'm not going to speak about the projector because uh, there are many different prices. You may already have one in the room. One of your members may already have a projector. So use whatever you can. And if you uh, have a room like here where it's very bright and you meet during the day, <clears throat> then, um, you need to have a more powerful projector to be sure that people can, can see it. So that's a small meeting setup. Now I'm going to uh, move up from that and go to a slightly be bigger setup. And the next step is actually to add a soundboard to, be, to have better audio. So you can see in here on the right of the computer, I have a soundboard and going into the soundboards, I have two things. I have the uh, microphones that I'm going to use in the room. And then I have uh, the audio from Zoom. So from the computer, that's a speaker output of your computer that goes into the soundboard. And then the output of the soundboards, I have <clears throat> one that's going out to a speaker in the room. So people in the room can listen to, uh, to the Zoom participants. And then the other output of the soundboard 
is going to go to the microphone inputs of the computer so that uh, whatever we picked up in the room in person meeting uh, can be heard by the people that are online and watching it. So uh, let me uh, <clears throat> show you a little bit what it looks like, which I'm going to use, let me use this one. So <clears throat> this is a soundboard. Yeah, make sure it's a little delay. Okay, so uh, I have multiple microphone inputs on the left here. I have, this is a sound from the computer and this is the output, the two outputs I have. So that's uh, just uh, the setup. I'm going to go through uh, some of that in the presentation too. So, but let me show you what it looked like. So the soundboard, this one is a different one from uh, the one I just showed you, but uh, you can buy one for like 90 bucks. I recommend a storage case to carry it in and out. That's another 20 bucks. And you just need like four or five, four channels or even less. So to manage that, unless you run a, a bigger meeting, you want more microphones, but that should do it. Now the way to connect, to connect, um, um, the audio from your computer, it all depends on the computer you have and the inputs and outputs of your soundboard. But typically old computers had two uh, mini jacks output, one for the speaker, one for the mi microphone. But newer computers now, they only have one that is doing both. And it's, it's a good thing if you want to connect a headset with a, with a microphone. But uh, in this case, you want to split and go to two different locations. So what you need is a kind of a splitter like the one you have here, where uh, it's, uh, it has the male TRS connection to your computer. And then you get the two female uh, called TRS connections that you can uh, direct uh, to the speaker or and use or use as a microphone. If you don't want to use, um, uh, this you can also use on the right, you have two USB uh, adapters that will also give you uh, uh, a mini jack uh, output for this, both speaker and microphone to your computer. So, and once you plug them in the USB, you have to be able to select them in Zoom to, see, to tell which one you are using. So, and then you can use, uh, different microphones. So again, uh, this is so I can speak with this one as well, different audio, but, and I also have another wired microphone here. So you can have multiple, and this this one will be good if, uh, if you want different people in the room to participate, you move the microphone to them, they can speak and everybody can hear them. So, and then the output goes to uh, a speaker. So if you're in a small meeting, you can just use regular computer speakers, or if you're in a bigger room, you can use some like that, uh, that would be able to just make sure everybody can hear you. So this is kind of a medium size um, setup where you just have a better audio but still things like that. Now, what can you do to uh, improve it and build up on it? So the next step, my recommendation is to uh, add an additional computer to handle the Zoom tasks, which will allow you to add an additional camera and uh, handle the share screen and everything. So as you could see here, I had two computers. So uh, I recommend that the one you see at the bottom here is the one from before uh that goes to the projector so uh you have a clean view of uh, zoom uh either in gallery mode uh at the beginning when you do social time but during the speaker you go to speaker view and then everybody can see the speaker on the screen uh but the other computer you would be your zoom host and then you'll be able to handle the waiting room the chat 
uh, add, remove spotlight, share the screens and everything without uh, disrupting the what you actually send to the projector. So it's, uh, it, it's much cleaner that way if you do this. And uh, the other benefit is you'll be able to add an, an additional camera to those this other computer. And I'm going to um, explain different options for that in a minute. So, uh, because if you have a bigger meaning, big club, if you have like 10 people, it's more 10 people, then you put one webcam on them and that's fine. We can figure out who is speaking and everything. But if your room is much bigger and you put a webcam that shows everybody, everybody will be a small dot on the screen and we don't know. So we want to be able to have another camera move closer to the people who are speaking. So one option to uh, do it as well is um, uh, you can say, okay, what about connecting through a cell phone? And uh, so there, there is good and bad doing that. So first you, you need to make sure that if you connect through a cell phone at the same time, the meeting is running on, that you have no audio on it. So you are muted and speakers are off. You, need to, you are going to add an additional connection to the network. So you need to make sure your network connection can handle it. And then also you have to hold it steady. So, um, because if you already put in your hand and, and shake and everything, it's uh, people are going to get, get seasick by watching it. <laughs> and uh, also it's, it's uh, an additional strain on the, on the video. It's a video is going to be fuzzy. So one good way to do that is to have a, a gimbal <clears throat> and there are many gimbals like that for, uh, especially for cell phones that are not very expensive and it's a stabilizer, something you hold in your hand and uh, it keeps uh, the camera steady. And <clears throat> I'm going to um, show this to you. I have, it's one of the participants, if you're on gallery view, you can see it, but I'll, I have this uh, sitting here connected to the meeting. And <clears throat> uh, can I, am I getting back yet? So, uh, so you can see, I can move it slowly and everything, and it's it's not uh, jerky and everything. So, and then you can put it back on the table and point it at someone because it has a tripod at the bottom, so it's very easy to uh, <clears throat> to handle. Now, another solution is to have. Uh, another camera, external camera with an HDMI ca cable. And uh, then if you have the HDMI output of the camera, then you need to bring it to the computer and you have these devices here that convert an HDMI signal to USB. And once you use that, uh, they come into the computer as an uh, additional webcam. And you can just select this webcam and then you will see the signal from the camera. Uh, so these are prices. So the USB 2.0, the two on the left, they are only 2.0. They are cheaper. The one on the right is a, a more expensive one that's um, over 100 bucks and it's 3.0. So it's supposed to be better. I haven't seen a huge difference uh, between those two. And I'm using actually both for different cameras right now, and, <clears throat> and they seem to work uh, uh, both. Uh, what you can do as well is what I've done earlier on is you have a kind of a, a, a gimbal for uh, a bigger camera. And even, I mean, this is much more expensive solution, but uh, uh, it's, uh, let me bring it in but it really gives you more freedom to what you want to, uh, to do. So uh, this is a camera gimbal with a Sony camera. And so I can move it around. It's not a bit too jerky, so. And um, what I have here is I also have an HDMI um, wireless transmitter that goes to a receiver. Uh, so I don't, I'm not tied to a cable, I can actually go anywhere and do that. So 
this is the equipment. If I switch to the camera, this is actually now I can move around and I can go back to our <clears throat> to Dugan and see what she's doing. Uh, still watching, still going on. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's a heavy piece of equipment. So it's, uh, you need to be able to uh, <clears throat> assign someone that can handle it to, uh, to do it. So now I'm going to put it back on the tripod and then it can be uh, left there for the rest of the meeting. <clears throat> and then the last uh, way to do it as well is to uh, use uh, a switcher. So again, that's more expensive, but for big meetings like uh, for big meetings or for like special events where you really want to have multiple uh, uh, views of the event and be able to switch to one to another, you can use a switcher uh, <clears throat> to do it. And so you would have multiple cameras going into the switcher, only one signal out that would go to your computer through the USB HDMI uh, device adapter that I. I uh, told about earlier, and then you will control what goes through it. And now we're again getting a little over the top. So again, that depends on the <clears throat> technical ability of whoever is going to do it for you. Uh, you can also use a virtual switcher uh, using some software um, instead of the um, of the physical switcher. And let me see if I can switch. So for this, I'm going to now try to share the screen and show you this is, there is a, a software called OBS that's free. And it allows you to define all the different things. So if I want to show the, the close up, I do that. Uh, in, and I have another webcam on my computer. This is a wide shot from over there. And then you can also uh, do uh, picture in picture. So, and then that's where you saw me move the things around. So uh, I can have the presentation and put myself in one of the corners, or I can even have myself and have the presentation in one of the corners. So, you can play around and define the different things and go to, from one to the other. But again, that's very, very advanced, much more advanced. So you need to make sure you have someone who knows how to handle that. Let me um, stop sharing the screen. I'm gonna go back to the presentation. And the last thing I want to mention is I didn't really give any pricing on anything for uh, cables and connectors because it all depends on the equipment you are going to select. So uh, I would say for a small meeting, you might not even need additional cables because you're closer to the computer. But if you have the soundboard and everything, you need cables to connect from the computer to the soundboards, to the speaker and everything. So but a hundred dollars should be way enough to be able to do that. And what I've done is I've done a spreadsheet, which um, now I, again, I'll have to share the screen. I've done a spread, spread, spreadsheet to give you an idea of um, there you go, should be coming up how much it would cost. So for a typical slow, small meeting, uh, it'll be at like 246, but again, it depends. I didn't put the laptop in there. You don't have to buy the laptop, it's obviously cheaper. Uh, if you have medium sized meeting, you uh, it's a little more. If you have a large one, you, you buy into other options for stabilizer, capture devices and things like that. And then on the right, you can um, decide uh, what you want to select for yourself. If you buy everything, it's much more expensive, obviously, but, but the last uh, few things you might not need that anyway. So it will tell you how much. And then on the, in the middle, you get the links to uh, Amazon on where, where to buy it. And 
Again, you don't have to select exactly the same, uh, the same you want, but uh, the same item, but something similar, and it gives you an idea of uh, what to select. Um, just to summarize, I'm gonna go back. This is the most important, I believe, the most important um, graphic. And uh, this is just with everything on it. But again, if you have a small meaning, you don't know, you might not need the second computer, you might not need the soundboard, uh, but it really tells you how you should hook up everything. So, and, and pick the right solution from your cloud. So, with that, I'm going to open it up to question and answer. We have uh, less than 10 minutes, but uh, if you have a question, you can unmute yourself. And I'll try to address it. Otherwise, yeah, I wanted also to give my email address and, and I will put it in the chat um, so that uh, if I cannot answer your question right now, you can email me and get more information. I had a question. Okay. Um, how would you integrate, like our room already has a PA system. It's basically a microphone that plugs into the wall. I think it's an XLR wall plug. It's wired. Um, we use it, we're a small club, but we use it extensively because a lot of people don't hear as well. Um, how would you integrate that in with all of this? So if you plug in, uh... A microphone to the wall. Uh, what you'll need to do is get a soundboard and then plug in the output of the soundboard to the wall, and then your microphone to the soundboard. Because uh, okay, otherwise, because you need to be able uh, to get what the microphone output. You need to be able to get it back into Zoom. So uh, the only way is to do it through a soundboard. So the soundboard is kind okay. of doing a crisscross and serving the, the audio to the right people. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? I have a question that's not quite so technical, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's regarding whether a meeting should be a hybrid meeting, whether a meeting should be a Zoom meeting or a meeting simply in person. Mm -hmm. Our club, Coronado, meets at the Hotel Del Coronado. And what I'm wondering is, would our club be better off to have two meetings a month in person, no Zoom at all, and the other two meetings specifically on Zoom, so that when we do meet in person, we encourage more attendance? I don't know. Well, it's a decision it. from your club. I guess, and um, let me uh, switch off the... And I'm interested in hearing what some other clubs think of that sort of dilemma or opportunity. I or... mean, there are different things in what's better for your club or what's, uh, um, what, what should you do? I mean, our club decided that meeting in person was people were eager to do that. So we wanted to be, give them a solution to do it. Uh, we would insist that people that come uh, would be vaccinated or you can, I don't know, have special rule, or rules for masks and everything, but people were already eager to do that and we were afraid to lose members that don't want to do Zoom if we do that. Yeah. <clears throat> Chris, this is Ivan and, and we're having, you may know this, our first look at a hybrid approach this Wednesday, this coming Wednesday. And the and right now at Coronado is to pursue the hybrid meeting. Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the end, Ivan. The, the plan right now, the board approved plan is to pursue the hybrid meeting strategy. We've purchased equipment and Ray Carno has been our, you know, kind of our architect for that following a lot of the things you've heard here today from Philippe. Uh, so they're going to practice that on Wednesday. And the idea is that, you know, we, we're already looking at speakers for next year that we would bring in on Zoom. Uh, we have to be portable because we meet in multiple places uh, in addition to the Dell, the various yacht clubs and so on. Uh, so the portability of this whole apparatus has been uh, an important consideration too. And uh, if you do it right, uh, 
are good hybrid meetings, then it's, it's very flexible. People can decide whether they want to att attend in person or through Zoom. People that are not uh, confident that they should meet with other people can stay at home. Uh, right. But the people that are really eager to go back to real meetings can do it. Yeah, we can do both. And, and we're really uh, considering using this, Philippe, as a, as a recruiting tool uh, for younger people who can't get away from their desk uh, across the bridge <laughs> to come to the hotel bell for a $35 lunch for two hours in the middle of the week. You know, so it's really uh, something we're going to use as part of our out, you know, outreach to new members. And, and, uh, and certainly, you mentioned the speaker options. Uh, I mean, we had a rear admiral, retired British naval officer talking to us about the Mary Rose. Yeah, you can have speakers from, from, uh, from further away. Monday. And yeah. also, what I want to point out is with what we don't know actually how long it's going to last and how long we're going to do that. And <clears throat> you have to decide uh, how long you're going to do it. And then the longer we are going to do it, the more important for you will have to have the equipment owned by the club to set, it, set that up. And right. I want to take some other questions. So Elise, you have a question? Yes, um, we may be meeting outdoors uh, in the beginning before we move indoors. And um, how um, do we need to use a television instead of a screen? So yeah, that's something I didn't mention for a small uh, club meeting, instead of going to the projector, you can go to a, a big screen TV. Uh, it's all depend on your on your location. If you are outside, you might uh, it might be a better solution, so you can see. Otherwise, it's too bright. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but a TV would be only for a small crowd. Crowd, it's not as big as a projector, so you have to see it based on your location. Okay, thank you, Gus. Yes, thank you. Uh, in one of the hybrid meeting. Uh, uh, websites I've gone to, uh, it was referred to as a mixer. Is a mixer the same as... Uh, a mixer is a soundboard, yeah. Yeah, it's the soundboard is a mixer. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's a sound mixer. That's all I needed to ask, yeah. Very good. Uh, we'll take Anne-Marie and then Jerry after that. Thanks for the presentation. Can you tell me again the amount of Wi-Fi bandwidth that's required to run uh, a normal Zoom or, or put in the chat the website of where we can check it? Well, it's it's difficult because it's both download and upload that you need. Um, when we had actually uh, uh, people installing a new uh, setup here at, at our home, they said that someone said that you need 100 megabits per Zoom session. So if you have two computers, yeah. you have 200 megabits. Now this, uh, I haven't tested it, but uh, that can make sense. I mean, if uh, if you have three devices and you start <laughs> putting a strain on a, on our network, even though we have a lot, but that's only receiving. But you you also need to send. So if you have issues as well about speed, a good thing is to switch off your video if you can, because you don't want to do it if it's the main feed for all the participants. But if you have other uh, devices connected, then it's it's fine. And we only have one minute, so we have Jerry. Uh, last question. Uh, Philippe, first of all, let me say your Rotary Club is very fortunate to have you. Uh, <laughs> and when I think about the, the difficulties we've had over the years, uh, just putting simple audiovisual equipment together to make it work, um, it's a nightmare, quite frankly. And I hate to be the devil's advocate, but I've got to say, um, I think things get compounded when all of a sudden you have Zoom meeting and personal. 20 seconds. I'm sorry? 20 seconds where I'm going to be kicked out. So, <laughs> okay. so anyway, that's the, uh, uh, that's my, my comment is when you combine Zoom and the personal meeting, you've got yourself open to a lot of equipment. Okay, so thank you all. And again, I'm, my email, can you send me an email if you have any questions?